Hi, I'm Sanjay Nagchowdhury, Development Lead for the IBM AppConnect Enterprise product. In this video, I will demonstrate how to get started with using IBM AppConnect Enterprise version 12. I'll take you through an overview first. We have a toolkit which allows you to develop your message flows so that you can process messages. We have a console which allows you to administer AppConnect Enterprise using commands. And we have a web user interface, which allows you to administer your message flows. You can use capability like record and replay and business transaction monitoring. We have a tutorials gallery, and I'm going to show how to use the tutorials gallery by selecting a tutorial and importing it and then using it. So let's do that. First of all, let's start AppConnect Enterprise and bring up the tutorials gallery. So I'm using a Windows system and I have AppConnect Enterprise version 12 installed. I'm going to start the toolkit and I will first be prompted to select a workspace. So I have my workspace selected, I'll click launch. And now the toolkit has opened and it is showing the welcome page. The welcome page has a link to the tutorials gallery has linked to the IBM documentation for AppConnect Enterprise, and it also has a link to install a language pack. So I can open the tutorials gallery by clicking on the tutorials link. And in the tutorials gallery, I can select from over 100 different tutorials so that I can understand quickly how to use the different capabilities that are provided in IBM AppConnect Enterprise. I can filter through the list of tutorials by searching for a specific area. For example, I can type REST and it will show all the tutorials which are related to using REST requests. One of the key use cases of IBM AppConnect Enterprise is to transform a message from one format to another. So I'm going to search for a tutorial that shows us how to do a transformation. So if I select transformation, I can see lots of different tutorials which allow me to do a transformation. I'm going to select the very first one, which is using an HTTP input node, which will receive a message over HTTP and transform it. So when I select the tutorial, I can see an overview of a tutorial it describes briefly what the tutorial does and has a button where I can start the tutorial. So I'll go ahead and click start. So the tutorial steps are shown on the right hand side. Each tutorial has four steps. It has an overview, a create step, a prepare step and a run step. And you can follow through each of these steps to go through the tutorial. Each tutorial has projects which you can import and the create step has an import button, which you can select to import the projects. So I'll go ahead and import the projects for this tutorial. And now I can see that the project has been imported. So before I continue, I'm going to give you an overview of this message flow. And to do that, I'm going to show a description using a slide. So I'm going to talk about using a message flow. So the project that I've just imported from the tutorials gallery contains an application which has a message flow. The message flow receives a JSON message using an HTTP input node. It has a mapping node to transform the JSON message from one format to another. So there are fields called input field one and input field two, and they are renamed to output field one and output field two. And the new JSON message is then sent back in the response by the HTTP reply node. In order to run the message flow, I need to use an integration server. So let's go through what an integration server is. So in order for a message flow to process a message and for the message flow to transform it, the application which contains the message flow must be deployed to an integration server. An integration server is a process which can be started independently or it can be managed by a component called an integration node. 
By using an independent integration server, you can quickly deploy and test your integration solutions. The integration server can also be used in a container, which you can run in your cloud deployments. If you want to use the integration server locally, you can start it on the command line or from the toolkit. So before I start using my message flow, I'm going to create an integration server. So I can select the integration servers in the integration explorer view. I can right click and select create a local integration server. This brings up a wizard. It has the name of the integration server to be created and some options. I'm just going to leave them with the default values and click finish. This will start the integration server on my machine and will provide me with a link to the console log, which has the output when the integration server is running. So the integration server process has now started and I can click on this link to view the, the console log. So I can see that the integration server has started and it can receive administrative REST requests on port 7600. The integration server uses a work directory and you can access this work directory in the toolkit. And the work directory has a serverconf YAML file, which allows you to configure your integration server. And those configuration options are read when the integration server starts up and it uses them. If I select on integration server, I can see the different properties that it is using in the properties view. So I have imported this project and it contains this message flow. It has an HTTP input node and it is configured to receive a JSON message. It has a mapping node, which uses a map to transform the JSON message so that the field input field one and input field two are changed so that the output message contains output field one and output field two. I can test the message by using the flow exerciser. The flow exerciser is a tool in the toolkit, which allows you to run messages through a message flow. So I clicked this record button here that has actually deployed the application and the message flow to the integration server. And now I can send a message to the flow. So an example input message has been provided by the tutorial and I can click send. So I can now see that the input message has been sent to the flow and the output message has been received. And I can see that the output message contains the new field values. Using the flow exerciser, I can click on the highlighted connection to see the content of the message. So I can see the message before it was transformed. So if this shows the message body, it shows it is using the JSON domain and it has for fields input field one, input field two. And if I click on the message icon on the connection after the mapping node, I can see the message has the new field names, output field one and output field two. So that was a simple message flow, which I used to transform a JSON message and I imported that project using the tutorials gallery. I'm now going to show you how to create a message flow from scratch and I will use a transformation node to convert the message. But this time I will convert it so that a JSON message is transformed into an XML message. So I will create a flow which has an HTTP input node, a compute node and an HTTP reply node. And the compute node will transform the message from one format to another. So in this case, from JSON to XML. So I am going to create a new message flow in the same application. And I'll call it transform JSON to XML. And I will now construct the message flow. So on the left hand side here is a palette and that has a toolbox category and a connectors category. So first of all, I'm going to select an HTTP input node by dragging and dropping it onto the canvas. I need to configure the HTTP input node. So I need to specify a path suffix. 
So I will put a path suffix to use and I need to specify that I'll be processing a JSON message. I'm now going to select an HTTP reply node so that a response can be sent to the client that sends the HTTP request. And I'm going to select a node called a compute node, which will transform the JSON message to XML. I can wire it up by selecting the out terminal from the HTTP input node and then select the input terminal on the compute node. Similarly, I'm going to select the out terminal from the compute node and wire it to the HTTP reply node. There's a red cross showing on the compute node because I haven't configured the compute node yet. So I can do this by double clicking on it. And this will bring up an ESQL editor, which I can use to configure the compute node. So I will copy the message headers and then I'll add a single line of ESQL, which will construct the output message. So I can do this by typing set output root dot XML NSC dot output message equals input root dot json dot data. So here I'm telling the compute node to create a new message in the XML and the C domain. It has a root element called output message and that will contain the message body that was in the input message. And the input message will be under JSON data. So I can now try running my flow using the flow exerciser. And I can send a message to the flow and I will send the exact same message as before to this flow. So I have input field one, hello, input field two, which has world. And if I send this message, I can see that the input message contained JSON and the output message contains XML and the root element has output message and under the output message, it has the elements from the input message. As before, I can click on the message icon on the highlighted connection and I can see the input message before the compute node, which has JSON. And I can click on the message icon on the connection after the compute node and I can see that the message body is using the XML in the C domain. It has a root element called output message and underneath that it has the fields from the input message. So that was an example of creating a message flow from scratch and doing a transformation using a compute node to transform a JSON message to XML. I'm now going to create another message flow, which shows how to use a different protocol. So, so far I've been using HTTP. IBM App Connect Enterprise can support a variety of different protocols and message formats. In this example, I'm going to put a message to IBM MQ and I'm going to create a, a brand new message flow, which will read the message from the input queue. It will do exactly the same transformation as before and um, put the XML message to an output queue, which I can then read from the queue. So in order to use a queue manager with IBM MQ, I need to create a policy and the policy needs to be contained in a policy project. So I will create a policy project called MQ policy project. And in that policy project, I'll create a policy called MQ policy. So now I'm in the policy editor and I'm going to select the MQ endpoint type for the policy. I'm going to select the connection of type server. I'm going to provide the name of a key manager, which is Sanjay NQM. The host name is localhost. And I'll save that. So that is my policy. And I can use this policy to configure my MQ nodes. I'm going to go ahead and deploy that policy project to the integration server. And I can do that by simply dragging and dropping to the integration server. And I get confirmation that it has deployed successfully. So now I'm going to create a new flow. 
and in this flow, I'm going to use an MQ input node to read a message from the queue. So the input queue that I'm going to use is called in.json object. And I'm going to configure the MQ input node to use my policy. So it will now use the details from that policy to make the connection to the queue manager. I'm going to add an MQ output node. And in this MQ output node, I'm going to specify the key name, and the key name will be called out.xmlnsc. And the policy will be the same policy. So it's using the same key manager. So now all I need to do is add the compute node. So as before, I wire the connection from the out terminal of the MQ input node to the in terminal of the compute node and wire the out terminal from the compute node to the in terminal of the MQ output node. So a red cross is shown there because I haven't configured the compute node. And this time I'm going to select the same ESQL module as before. And on the MQ input node, I need to specify the domain that will be used to parse the message. So I'm specifying the JSON domain. I can now deploy the message flow through the flow exerciser by clicking on the red button. So the flow is now being deployed and I am going to put a message to the queue. So I'll put the same JSON message as before. So this will have been processed by the message flow and I can now see that a message has been put to the out.xml.nsc queue. And if I browse that queue, I can see the XML message that has been put to the queue by the message flow. In the flow editor, I can click on view path to view the path that the message took through the flow. And I can see the message body of the input message. I can also see the MQMD that was in the message. And I can also see the message after it was transformed by the compute node. So I can see it's using the XML and the C domain and it's using the output message element. As well as using the toolkit development environment and the command console to run administrative commands, we have a web user interface. I can start the web user interface by selecting the integration server and selecting start web user interface. And this will show me the applications that are deployed to the integration server. I can select the application and I can see the different flows that are selected. I can select the properties of an application and I can also select properties of the message flow. I can also use the web user interface to view statistics and I can use capability such as record and replay and business transaction monitoring. We have comprehensive documentation in the IBM documentation for App Connect Enterprise version 12. You can look at what's new and see a description of the changes that have been made in version 12. There are links to the videos as well. Please take a look at those videos in the playlist for IBM App Connect Enterprise. One of the new capabilities that we've added is a way to create unit tests for a particular message flow node. So you can right click on the node and create tests. And we have comprehensive documentation on how to do that in IBM documentation. One of the use cases that we have is being able to transform a message by using a message model. And we show how to do that using JSON domain. And we have videos which show how to validate JSON messages using a JSON schema. And you can see those videos in the playlist and there is documentation on it in the IBM documentation as well. So in this video, I have demonstrated how to use different message flows to process messages. You can use the tutorials gallery to quickly understand how to use the different capabilities that are provided. 
I described how to start an integration server and deploy your message flows to it. Full documentation for IBM App Connect Enterprise is available in IBM documentation. There are also a host of videos in the IBM App Connect Enterprise YouTube playlist which show how to use specific capabilities.